Hi, this is Kyle from APS, and I'm here to show you how to measure halyards on a keel boat. Um, you would uh, need to do this if you don't have your boat's measurements, uh, if you're racing and you don't have access uh, to your one design measurements, uh, and you just simply want to measure these right on the boat. All you're going to need is this. I use a 100-foot tape measure. This is uh, a fiberglass tape. You don't want to be using a metal one. And uh, let's get started. Okay, I'm going to start, um, I'm going to measure this main halyard, um, and it'll represent, I'll talk through uh, the differences between uh, doing the main or a jib or a spinnaker as we go through this. Um, on my tape measure here, I have a piece of halyard leader that is tied on here very securely. I'm making sure the shackle is closed tightly, and I'm going to simply just tie the end on here. And I'm going to do a couple of overhand knots at least three and when doing these if this were to come apart somebody's going up in a harness or a bosun's chair to retrieve this so uh, an ounce of prevention tape your knots when you're doing these kind of things so they can't come undone and pull this down and just gonna simply tape my ends so they can't untie themselves okay so that's ready to go up as a one man operation here. I'm gonna hold this in one hand, keeping my fingers away from this, and I'm just simply gonna sky the halyard. Pull it all the way to the top. Okay, once I'm there, I'm gonna clutch or cleat it off. Now, um, I would be tempted to just take this up to where I would attach it to the mainsail and say that's the length. Well, that's not necessarily the case because this has dual purposes. Uh, this main halyard could be a topping lift for the, uh, uh, for the boom. So if that were the case, I would put the boom down on the deck and I would bring this back and measure to the end of the boom, which is going to be longer than just attaching it to the mainsail. Uh, if it's a cruising boat or I had an aerated tow rail, I might be storing my main halyard over here so it doesn't bash on the and make noise on the mast. So that's my first measurement. Um, if this were a jib halyard, I would not measure it just to the head of the jib on the deck. Maybe I store it down on a pad eye even lower on the deck or I use that halyard as uh, a lift for my dinghy through a whisker pole. So think about the longest extension of the working end of that halyard. Um, spinnakers, same thing. Um, where am I launching it from? Is it coming out of here? Is it on the deck on the bag? Am I coming out of a forward hatch? And then when I'm dousing it, where is it going? How long does that halyard need to be to get it down below or down that hatch? And that's the point to which you want to take this measurement. Um, now to do the second measurement, which is the length that's inside the mast, that's a little simpler. I'm just going to walk forward. I've got my halyard skied, and I'm just going to go down here to the turning block, and I'm going to pull this very taut. It's a windy day, and I can take my measurement here. So this would be the same for whether it was the main, the jib, the spinnaker, and I've got my two lengths. Okay, we've got our two measurements. We've got the halyard going up, up the mast and coming down, and I'm going to start right here in measuring my deck length needs. Right at the turning block where I st stopped before, I'm just gonna run back to just behind the clutch here, and I'm gonna note that at around seven feet. Now the last line measurement I need to take is the actual tail. What's the maximum number of wraps that I would ever put on this wench? And then what's the longest length that I would ever need? And I'm thinking, that's probably pretty good, so I'm just going to mark that. Take this off. Grab my tape here. Okay, and run at that length. And I'm looking at 12 feet. Okay, so I've got my four actual line measurements. I've got uh, from the very end of the halyard up. And then I usually add a foot at the top um, because the tape didn't go all the way um, up flush against the crane or the sheave box. And the line's got to travel inside 
and possibly over a second sheave. So I just add a foot in there so I don't miss anything. So I've got the first length, I'm adding a foot at the top, my down length and my two measurements here. And that's the length of the halyard I need. For answers to more questions around line, rigging, and splicing, visit us at APSLTD.com.